mostly what we don't know about is uh, rhythm and blues. Well, that's what I, th- I think, or where rhythm and blues is now, how it fits with whatever else is going on. Um, but we also don't know what radio is, so the, the, the show may be a bit untogether here and there. Um, or what, we, what we're doing in the future. Um, John's revised his opinion. He's, he, he now thinks FM radio might have 5, 10, 20 years to go on some sort of scale. But it's coming to an end. Uh, social media, in some form, might take over, we think. Not sure about that either. Um, the, the time scale is very difficult. Uh, H- HMV, we thought that that was a, an event because in Exeter it, it had gone, but now it's come back again. So what, what's happening with music distribution, we're not, not quite sure. Um, but we've, we've, we're also trying to find out about uh, education, uh, schools, universities, so forth. We, we went to BET and also to Learning Technologies because um, part, well, partly ra- just radio technology. Uh, we we, we want to know what's going on with, with sound and there's there's lots of ways of producing stuff because uh, as education moves online or some of it does uh, the, the ways of producing stuff is it, it's more like it's more like a studio everywhere I mean this is this is a good radio studio in the center of Exeter but there's obviously lots of um, video places elsewhere and also Devices, phones, tablets, so forth—they they can all be used for for sound. They're quite—they're quite good. Uh, so, one one MOOC I've been trying to follow is called the Unbundled University, and I'm going to play uh, one of one one a track a a, a video from that. You, you'll find I've I've just tweeted out uh, we not know W E N O T N O. If you find that. Uh, you'll find a link to this. Just retweeted this, but the one the one I'm going to play, which, which there is a video of it, but the sound is probably going to be enough, uh, is from Martin Weller, who's from the Open University, and this is is talking about the Commons, a Commons approach. Um, in other words, it's it's Creative Commons. These are hosted by Leeds University, and you can reuse them. So we're pretty sure this is okay to to use on the radio. So when we think about how um, things are changing and digital technology is allowing new ways of developing provision and making provision more accessible. So on the one side, we've got the market approach where private providers are coming in and venture capitalists are coming in and trying to, you know, come into that market to actually to make money. But on the other side of it, we've got the commons approach. And I was particularly interested because of your role and what you've written about and your interests about why you think it hasn't gone more towards the commons approach and how that might be a different way to develop this this type of provision. Yeah, I, I think it, it's a really interesting and deep question. Um, and I've just been reading a PhD thesis about this very topic, in fact. I think it's um, part of the issue is, you know, higher education academia exists within a society so you know, and our society is um you know for one for a better phrase kind of mainly based around a kind of neoliberal construct and so where everything is is thought of in terms of of, of the market um and so to suggest that we, we need to operate in a different manner um kind of presupposes that you can kind of change all of these other structures over here which on, on how, how you're rewarded so for instance you know we often talk about a kind of prestige market in in higher education so if you're so in in the uk we have the ref the research excellence framework for instance so if your value as an academic is partly assessed by um the rating you get through ref which is kind of based on metrics and publications those kind of things then that's the kind of game you have to play and if a commons-based approach isn't recognised within that structure, then you know 
personally speaking for lots of people it's like you know that would put their job at risk you know and they're kind of livelihood so you're kind of operating against system but having said that um you know i think we do see a commons based approach working quite well in in, in different places uh, but often people don't think of that so i think you could think of the the blogger sphere as a kind of you know a commons based approach and and often that's where people get the kind of their best ideas from and, and it's where they kind of have a lot of that kind of academic discussion that they want to engage in. So it, it does kind of exist. But I think we've not cracked things like I mean, when learning objects were a thing back in the late 90s, you know, the, the kind of argument for learning objects was why are we all creating multimedia objects or whatever or online learning material about the same stuff kind of repeatedly? It makes more sense for us just to kind of pool our resources so we've got one or four or five simulations for, you know, how a sine wave works, whatever was, I think, Stephen Dow's example. So and that's still a kind of compelling argument. Um, and you see examples of that, but we've not really broken through. So we went from learning objects to open educational resources. Uh, and you see some of that with open textbooks. But it, I think often the kind of reward structures aren't, aren't there. We get rewarded a bit for sharing our research. We don't really get rewarded for sharing our teaching. That's still sort of seen as our our ownership. Um, so I think it's partly around how we reward things and recognise things. There's also a certain um, reluctance, I think, often from people to 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 kind of expose your teaching. Some ways, it kind of feels quite thing. I think people are kind of I think to kind of expose what they do as, as they're teaching kind of publicly online. So, so I think the kind of initial argument for learning objects, which was a kind of very commons based approach. It still makes practical sense, but it, it's almost like we can't we haven't put in place an efficient ecosystem around it that kind of recognises it and encourages that as, as, as a way to operate. So do you think that that could be a future that's different than the future that's more pessimistic about the role of the market? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. And even within the market-based economy, um, you could see ways you could you could get that to work more effectively you know we've kind of often what happens is that we have a way of working that just kind of seems natural but it and we say we don't question it you know so um i think with you know open textbooks are a good example so we we've got used to purchasing copyrighted textbooks and that kind of seems that's the model you you, you operate on but what they've been looking at in, in the states for instance of creative commons people like cable green is kind of flipping that model so that uh, states or regions or libraries pay to produce goods which are then openly licensed and actually there's big savings to be made in doing that rather than trying to continually purchase goods um and once you've got that, once you've kind of got a, a body of open content, then adapting that content and sharing it and, and, and resharing your adaptations becomes feasible. So I think there are models that actually, even within a kind of neoliberal context, you could describe as making sense in terms of the, of the market, which would also encourage a commons-based approach.